an absolutely incredible way of discovering so many things and, and the potential out of there and the young scientists that are moving into this industry. Well, let's just talk to two people that, um, well, particularly Kevin Govender. He's the director of the Office of uh, Astronomy for Development. And then, of course, I've got Tembela Mantungwa, who is the communications officer here at the SAAO. It's so good to have both of you with us and welcome to the program. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you, Kevin. I mean, I'm talking about some of these incredible young scientists and people that are making such waves, and you are one such of them. If I can just read one of your accolades, actually two of them if you don't mind. You um, listed uh, in uh, as the Mail and Guardian's top 200 young South Africans, um, the National Science and Technology Forum Science Communicator Award in 2011, and to top that up, you're the first South African to be awarded the prestigious Edinburgh Medal for the creation and practical establishment of the Office of Astronomy for Development. That's unbelievable. Congratulations. Thanks for doing all of this. Ah, cool, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, talk to me about you, you, this for development. What development are we talking about? So, so our project is all about using astronomy to make the world a better place essentially. So, so what we mean by development is different in different parts of the world. We coordinate a global office from South Africa and we look at ways in which astronomy can impact on education and development globally. So we look at university level, how can astronomy inspire university students, how can it stimulate research, school level, inspiring young children into maths and science, uh, and the public, general public, uh, uh, spreading a sense of curiosity, a sense of scientific thinking and we we coordinate this with nine regional offices around the world and we sponsor projects uh, uh, and it's all done from uh, from here in South Africa yeah it's fantastic but now obviously uh, in order to do all of this you need a place like this and this I mean this is just this is absolutely incredible and the operations that go on and the students that come here and study um, what, what, do, what do we what do we do here in terms of students and learning astronomy we, we have different programs that uh, try to introduce children to astronomy, engineering and science in general. So we have uh, job shadowing programs in Cape Town where kids will be taken around the observatory and they will follow astronomers, they will follow engineers and they will also follow IT specialists and then from there then they will decide whether they want to pursue astronomy or they want to pursue engineering or they want to pursue IT. So there's, a, there's a host of different professions in here. Yes, exactly. And, and, and a lot of kids, when they, when, they, when they sign up for the program, they always assume that it's just astronomy that is done at the observatory. They don't understand that there's also engineering that is involved in astronomy. There's also IT that is involved in astronomy. And there's also outreach that is involved in, in astronomy. So we have a host of, uh, of, of things that they can, they can choose from. Yeah. Yes. You talk about outreach and the development programs that come with it, the social development aspect of it. And that's, I imagine, what you also focus a lot on. Yeah, absolutely. We sponsor projects from around the world and we look at everything from astro tourism, like you would have seen in the town of Sutherland, you yeah. know, the, the fact that the observatories here has changed the landscape. Yes. It, it, the, the sky becomes a tourist attraction and we're sponsoring projects all over, all over the world like this. Uh, um, um, we've recently sponsored a project in Armenia looking at ancient uh, links between ancient astronomy and modern astronomy in China we've looked at uh, astronomy for the visually impaired how do how do blind people uh, access the night sky uh, um, so we've been looking at various ways in which we can use astronomy to stimulate uh, 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 um, development from, from uh, in all walks of life yeah. I want to talk about the town of Sutherland and 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 this is what I'm going to ask you because when you when you arrive it's this tiny little town but you know it, it looks very unassuming and then you drive here and once you've been here and then you go back to the town and then you look and there's a school there and I believe that the school does exceptionally well with maths and science and a lot of tourists flock there uh, to try and come and get to see this wonder of the sky up above there. What, what has it done developing this for the town of Sutherland and surrounding towns? Well, Sutherland uh, was just a town that wasn't uh, known for anything and then salt was built and now it's, a, it's, a, it's an ague tourism town. So if you want to come and enjoy some time you know, away from your busy life, you come to Sutherland and you're not only going to experience tourism, you're also going to see stars, you're also going to interact with astronomy people and, uh, and, and we also 
have a, a community center where kids can do their homework at the community center. So they're not completely isolated now. They have a they have a place where they can plug in and connect to the to the bigger South Africa, yeah, if yeah. you like. Yes. I mean, you know, we, we worry very much. So when you look at the face of scientists as well, it's still very male, white dominated. But but when, since I've arrived, I have seen so many young and and please don't don't don't. I'm not offending you, but I've seen a lot of young black females yes. and that is exciting I mean it's exciting that this field is opening up mm -hmm. and it's looking so much more diverse is it, I mean from the outside that's what I'm seeing what about the inside in I mean what would you say yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, I can speak from a global perspective. Is, is that uh, 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 we're seeing the change more and more. Uh, uh, having young, young black people, young people of different skills, different different backgrounds. It's not about it's it's not about doing them a favor to bring them in, but it's about recognizing that they have something to contribute to yeah. the science. They have something different to contribute, and it's those different perspectives that actually make the difference to the science itself. It's fantastic! It's amazing. What yes, um, for for me, I, I would say in South Africa, we still have, like as outreach people, we still have a long way to go, mm -hmm. but so far we are progressing mm -hmm. positively and we we would like to have more females, we would like to have more, you know, more people taking astronomy as a, as a, as a career, but we also want um, society to, to, to hold um, scientists accountable, which wow. is why we have public programs every second and fourth Saturday of the month at the observatory where the general public can talk to astronomers and can engage with them, but we want science to be in the public platform. Thank you, both of you. Thank you so much for talking to us. I look forward to speaking to some of the students as well that are working here right now. But Kevin, keep up the amazing work. Thank you so very much. And of course, Timbella, thank you for uh, being so hospitable to us, being here as a team. Um, this place is surreal. I, you know, I, 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 I SMS my husband last night too. He, he asked me, what's it like? And I actually didn't have a word uh, besides surreal. You look up into the sky, not with a telescope, but with your naked eye. And it's almost like you, you're, you're looking into something that that is in a movie or a 3D movie. It's absolutely incredible. I'll talk to you more about it. But what you're seeing on your screen right now are the live visuals that we're currently experiencing. We can't stand outside full. This weather is absolutely not welcoming us here this morning, but still I'm loving it. I mean, we were blown in by 55 kilometer gusts of winds. And you can't say that every day, can you? Full, how's it looking? Yeah, thanks very much, Leanne. Well, uh, you certainly can't see that every day. Uh, what we're looking at right now is uh, why we've been talking about how cold it is, how uh, windy it is, how uh, wet it is. And of course, uh, here at the observatory, they really do need to monitor that. Uh, the outside feed, of course, that you've just seen, that is uh, what we're experiencing at the moment. And we are seeing a lot of mist continuing now.